recording. You are recording. Boom. All right. I'm Bruce Sundin, a communication, video, audio, electronic media person. Hi, I'm Andy Robinson, potato guy. <laughs> but I'm also and the potato extension agronomist. Agronomist, yes. and he's a multimedia guy, and uh, kind of wear a lot of hats. Yeah, and for two universities, work with the University of Minnesota and at DSU. Yeah, so he works for the bad guys. Could be not really bad. So, hey, well, we're talking obviously about time lapse. Um, so first, I'll just talk a little bit about the kind of the two basic types. When you think of time lapse photography, you think of pictures, and that's generally how it is, right? One picture after another, just like a, a movie works. Uh, it's really a series of pictures. And the nice thing about it is you can have a lot of time between those pictures, and then when you bring them together and run them, it makes things look like they're going really fast. Um, that, that all changes with the type of device. And so what I'm going to talk a little bit. Here is a GoPro. This is, don't have to use a GoPro for this, but this works. It has takes still pictures, but it also shoots video. And that's the other way to do time lapse. You just shoot straight video and you speed up the video. Um, the nice thing about that is you get sound with it. You also can speed it up and slow it down in places because it's capturing everything. The problem with it, huge file. I mean, if you're going to run, like, you have yours go like a week, right? Your time yeah. lapse? Yeah. yeah week if or you two. go a week or two, I mean, I can't even imagine the size of files and the space it would need. So that's why uh, photos work so well. Um, and then you can have different size photos. But you can do time lapse with your phone. Almost every phone, if you look in the settings, there's a time lapse option in there. So it'd be fun to play with just to get an idea. And we're going to talk about the two kind of the two types, as in I'm talking about short time lapse, three, four hours. Yours are two, three, four weeks. Weeks long. So um, do you guys have any questions to start with before we even kick this off? And then otherwise, Andy's going to start. He's going to get into his presentation about um, the longer format. I don't see any. OK, then. Conversation is blank. <laughs> I will find your PowerPoint. Sounds good. So as he finds this PowerPoint, this is actually um, comes from a presentation I gave about a year and a half ago at the NDSU Extension Conference. And it's been some, some things I've been working with. The main reason. I thought about doing this is because as spread out as I am between two states, I can't get to every place we're doing research on a daily basis. It's just not feasible. And so one way to capture the change, say, in our plants and their growth was by putting out these cameras that take pictures on specific intervals during the day. So just jump right in. So way I do this, you can either do it like Bruce said, either with a smartphone, if you want to do something over, I would say, a short period, or I use these field cameras to do more of a long period of time. And so that's what we're going to talk about and how to use these. So why do I use it? Like I said, I use it to capture data over time. It kind of helps give me those eyes in the field to show me what's going on when I wasn't there. It's really cool from a research standpoint. So you put down some kind of product, and you can compare that versus another one. Another, time lapse or pictures from the same time period to see what's going on, to see what's happening to those plants. Uh, I find they're also very fun. Uh, growers like them at winter meetings. They can be very interactive. They can see what's going on. They can actually get a visual, almost like a movie of it, versus just looking at a couple still shots. And so I, I think it's fun to do. I think it's fun to play with technology and try to find uses, especially in our extension activities that we do. So the two main ways I'm going to talk about here are using a smartphone or a field camera, like Bruce said, you can use your phone. This is an Apple iPhone here. You can see if you swipe on that picture, there's a time lapse uh, option that you can use. I've done these uh, with smartphones, say like when we're planting or when we're harvesting for two or three hours, I'll just set it up on the hood of my truck in a holder, and it will take that I'm video. Not sure if, uh, are you guys uh, seeing the PowerPoint? Pause. Okay. Um, yes, yes, it's fine. OK, good. Sounds right, good. I'm sorry. So anyways, so you can set them up like that. I don't have any of those for my smartphone today in this presentation, but if you go to my Instagram account, at Spudology, you can find a couple of them if you want to look at my ones I did on my iPhone. And then the main thing I'm going to talk about is these field cameras, as you can see here on the side. So 
uh, just real quick on the smartphone, what's nice about it, I use it for, say, a one day, you know, for setting up a trial. Because sometimes people are interested, how do you do your research? Especially the farmers, you know, when they're using these big planters and they're planting 40, 50, whatever acres in a day, and we plant eh, maybe half an acre. Um, it gives them some perspective, too, for what we're doing and helps them understand why it takes us so long to do it. Anyways, actually, I do have, this is from my smartphone. I forgot I did have this in here. So you can see this is a setting up a trial here. We're just staking it out, flagging it out. This is all taking just off the hood of my truck. Did you have a lot of copy? No. <laughs> actually, I didn't. It's moving uh, very fast. Yeah. But you can see, so we set it up. We plant the flags basically distinguish between where the different plots are planted. And uh, like I said, this is just off the hood of my truck, setting up on iPhone, just went to time lapse, hit the button, just let it run until we were done. So came back for some more seed there. And we planted some more. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we plant research trials. So that's kind of just a fun quick one. That's your quick two, three hour one. Um, here's a harvest one just to indulge you of how exciting and fun it is to harvest potatoes. We have a little harvester. We drive along, we stop, we bag it up. We drive along, we stop, we bag it up. And then you just kind of go up and down and harvest it. This is all in Grand Forks here, by the way, at our dry land research farm. It's the mini harvester. Yeah, it's our single row harvester. To find harvesters like this, you pretty much have to go to Europe. It's a European company that made this. So that's, that's how that works. So the one I want to talk a little bit more about, which may have more interest to this group, is how do you get pictures over time, over weeks of time or days of time, and uh, show that difference of what goes on. So th what I found for me what works is these cameras. Um, they're called Wingscapes. I'll show you this one here if you can see it. You may have to show it after, too. Um, but there's a camera called Wingscapes made by this Moultrie group company. So they have an 8 megapixel camera available for $50 and the 16 megapixel for $138. And this is, I, I just looked these prices up on bhphotovideo.com. Again, the website's bhphotovideo.com. And what I liked about shopping from them is they didn't have a limit on the number of cameras you could buy. A lot of places like Amazon would only let me buy like two cameras at a time. And on there I could go and buy four or five cameras at a time if I wanted to, if I'm doing them specifically for a certain research trial where I've got five treatments, for example. So anyways, to set it up, what you need, you got to buy a camera. You need to buy an SD card. So you have to have somewhere to store your pictures. Um, these ones take eight AA batteries. And it uses that's way more battery than you'll ever need. I can use these for three seasons on eight AA batteries as long as they don't fall apart on me. And then you need some kind of pole to set it up on. So I use, a, you can see in my picture there, is a green fence post. And there's actually that groove in the middle of it works really well because the backs of these cameras, there's kind of two knobs on the top and one on the bottom in the center, probably made to set against a tree or something. But it kind of fits in the groove of that fence post really well. The middle one on the bottom goes in the middle of that groove and then the outside ones on the top go on the outside of the pole. So it, it kind of helps keep it in place somewhat. So I'll put it on there with that and then I'll put zip ties, two zip ties around it to hold it on tight. And that's how I set it up. But before I actually put the camera on, I'll put that, I'll pound that uh, fence post in the ground kind of on an angle. You kind of got to guess what your angle for what you're trying to get a picture of. I'm not trying to get a picture of the sky. I'm trying to get a picture of the plants. So it's angled downwards towards the plants. And so I put the stake in first and then I attach the camera. You don't want to be pounding it steak with a camera on it, your camera might come off and you might ruin it or something. So, But anyways, that's how I set them up in the field. And um, with the camera itself, what's nice about these cameras, you open up the hood and you can uh, go through the settings. You can name your camera, you set your date and time. And when you have your date and time set, then you can set your photo frequency. So the way I normally set mine up, I'll set them up to take pictures, say, between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m., on usually every hour or every two hours is typically what I do. It just depends on how long of a time of period I'm working with. Because if I'm going to do this for six weeks, I'm probably going to do it every two or three hours. It's just so many pictures if you do it every hour. If you want to do something for three days, you can set it up to take a picture every 10 minutes if you want. It doesn't matter. I put in, I think, a 32 gigabit SD card on mine, and it says I can take 10,000 pictures. So I've never maxed it out for pictures. And that'd be a lot of files if you're trying to put those into a video. Mine typically around, I end up somewhere around 800 to 1,200 pictures, and that's still quite a few. 
Um, so, but I set it up so I get enough of pictures during the day, and then I'll go back. There's always some pictures in there you got to delete. Either you know, there's a storm and there's water on the camera, or you got a sun flare, or or maybe you know, it's just insect. It doesn't look right. Yeah, you got a bug crawling <laughs> across it or something. So I always go through my pictures and clean them up. But anyways, but there's all kinds of settings, and you can see there's a little knob there. You can adjust your focus. It says from I think like one foot or something like that out to 12 feet. So kind of put your focal on um, or six inches to yeah six inches to 12 feet. But just kind of figure out what you're trying to take, and you can estimate the distance or even get a little tape measure out and measure it too, so you can get the best image. And so I like these because they work in the field. They've got these great settings. Uh, they're waterproof. They've got a rubber seal around the outside of them, and I found that they work really good for me. So when I'm setting it up in the field. You can see there's that little screen there. I'll set it up. I'll let it run for a little bit, and then you can go back and go to the playback, and you can look at your pictures and check to see if it's what you want. The only thing is these, these cameras don't have a viewfinder on them, so you can't really put it specifically where you want it, but you can guesstimate, and then you can go to the viewfinder after it's taken a few pictures and see if that's where you want it to be. That's probably one of the downsides to these. And these cameras, these 16 megapixel ones, you can see the top that's got infrared lights on it. You can actually do nighttime pictures too if you want, but for me, for what I'm doing, I've never seen any value of that. But that's that's what these cameras look like. So here's some examples. See, there's, here's a picture here of my time lapse camera. I never would have got this had I not had the camera up in the field. This was at, in, in 2016, as you can see, June 17th of 2016. There was a big rainstorm in one of our potato plots. And um, pretty much, yeah, it looks like a rice paddy almost for as much water as we got. So this is at 10.30 a.m., but look at this, by 5.30 p.m., seven hours later, most of that water would come off. This is what happens when you're in a, a sandier soil and not in the clay of the Red River Valley. So it was a Red River Valley that would probably still be up to those plants. So it's kind of fun you can get pictures like this. This is the nice thing that I like about it is something happens, something goes on in your field. I've got a record of it here. So, and any one of those pictures you can pull out is a still shot like that. And if you don't want the stuff on the bottom, you can just crop it. So when I make the make the movie, uh, I go through all the pictures. I remove any bad pictures, bad quality, or like I said, anything you don't like. Um, depending on how you want your video to be, if you want it a 4x3 or 16 by 9 or whatever, uh, you can resize those pictures. I use, I've been using iMovie to make mine, and you can just set it and resize all of them. And that's a computer program. You just need some kind of program to make it, uh, to put all those videos, in, or all those pictures in, and then make a, a video. So. And then you'll want to set your film length. So I'll give you a couple examples here. Here's an example of a longer film length, and I can't remember what these were um, second per shot, but this is a um, actually a herbicide treatment that we apply to the plants. And you'll notice a couple things as you watch it. You'll notice the leaves kind of on the out, the upper leaves on the outside margins will get a little bit yellow as the plant continues to grow. And then there's some little weeds there between the potato rows. You'll notice that those weeds will kind of grow and then they'll die back. But so you can see what happens here. This is set up, um, looks like every half hour I was taking a picture. And you can see the date and the time stamp at the bottom, which is kind of nice to have the date and the time stamp. But you'll notice also the plant growing. And what's interesting with the potato, like a lot of plants are heliotropic, those leaves. At nighttime, they kind of go straight up. During the day, they lay out more to kind of track the sun and, and gather more sunlight. And you'll see here eventually when the irrigator went across and they'll get wet. See the leaves here starting to yellow from the herbicide treatment. This is just three days after. Fourth of July. See, I'm glad I had it there on the fourth so I didn't have to go out there. <laughs> some wind. Some more wind and rain. You can see the weeds in the row have started to die pretty much. And yeah, from some of that wind and stuff, I had to readjust the camera. But that's one of the downsides sometimes is if you don't have a really sturdy holding spot, you might have to readjust your camera. But yeah, as you can see here, just the plants continue to grow and they, they grew through the herbicide and most of the weeds died. And that's kind of what I was trying to see and look at. And I'm just gonna, it's pretty much ends here. So here in this video, what I did is I actually made the uh, advancement of the uh, pictures a lot, like tw half as or twice as quick. So you can see how much quicker this goes. And this is the kind of thing you can play with when you make these videos. Um, this one's just going a lot faster, double the speed. 
but it's the exact same video. But depending on what you're trying to show will probably depend on the type of speed and also the length of the presentation you're trying to give. So it seems like it's a little, it's chugging a little bit probably because the uh, whole connection here, so we'll just stop that. But it goes a bit faster than the other one. And then here's another one where I was just looking at the germination or emergence of some potato plants. Uh, there's some herbicide treatment to the plant the previous year, so there's herbicides in the potato. Actually, what you're seeing here, these are just weeds growing. So it shows weeds, there's a big rain event, went away, dries out. So again, you see the weeds growing here, the common lamb scorch. So you can show a lot of different things with these cameras like this. Every time it gets dark, is that each day? Yeah, you can just see the sunlight. That's the shadow. Because these are, we're looking um, west to the west here. So as the sun goes around, it's the shade from the plants. But anyways, now we can see some potato plants. There's a potato plant that kind of on the right side in the hill with the curled up leaves from dicamba damage. So that's growing, and we got more weeds growing. But anyway, it's just another example of what you can do with a camera. So what I like about this 8 megapixel camera, it's economical. You get, still get pretty good pictures. It has a timestamp, but there's no viewfinder on it. And uh, again, you get pictures like this, which are fun. The 16 megapixel, you got double the quality on the uh, lens, so you get a little bit more detail. Uh, it does record temperature. It does have the night vision. It does have the video screen. So those, some of the, those are some of the advantages of this more expensive camera. Uh, but like if you haven't done this before, just get the cheap one and try it out and see what it does. I mean, it's not very, it's not too expensive. So, anyways, as you can see here, uh, this is from the 16 megapixel. You see the air temperature. I've got the name of it. I named it Spud 33. You got the date and timestamp. So that's all nice information that it gives you. So anyways, some tips I have um, before you do it, practice picture taking before you put it out, because I know there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I've had it where the <laughs> SD card wasn't clicked in all the way. I've had it where I thought I had the settings turned on to take it those certain time frames, and I didn't. So uh, check and make sure it's working. That's, just, that's why I said the nice thing about the 16 megapixel one, it's got that viewfinder on it. So you can always set it up and come back a few hours later or whenever, a day later, and just make sure it's taking pictures. With the 8 megapixel, it doesn't have that, so you'd have to actually take the SD card out of it, pop it into a computer, check your pictures, make sure it's working. Um, you know, you got to make sure the lens is clean. Sometimes my lenses get dirty from the hard water from the sprinklers or dirt that pops up on it. And um, I have had some that get water in them because when you, we are under an irrigation system, there's a lot of water coming down. Once in a while, I get a little bit of water in them, and I'll, I'll check the seals, and sometimes that seal might be bent somewhere. So, but anyways, those are some tips and thoughts I have on the on the time lapse photography. Just have fun and enjoy it. And uh, there's my handle at Spudology if you want to follow me, or my website there, the short link. Awesome. Are there questions, comments? Yeah, we'll see if there's. You can speak or type. Want <laughs> to get to? And if we go off this, I can show them the fence post and how I set it up too. Here in here. Andy, do you know of any other staff who are doing this to demonstrate or to gather educational materials for extension work? Yeah, Mohammed Khan's group, I think, is starting to play around with it a little bit because they were asking me some questions the other day. Okay. Um, I'm not sure who else might be. Yeah, have we brainstormed with any others? I'm trying to think. Molly Sobe asked me specifically, is there a way to have a plexiglass thing and grow a plant so the kids could see the roots and the stem coming up in time lapse? And I said, I think so. That And that might be the case where you've got the infrared on these you know, you, you because usually when you I think when you do those roots under a box, you got to keep it dark or they won't come out to the outside. But maybe if you had a plexiglass box, but you made it dark on the bottom part and stuck the camera in there with the infrared, that might work. Oh. It's either that or you set up a camera next to it and you just take off the cover every once in a while and take a picture. and You can make a time lapse from that over time. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, before you start any project like this, like the playing, the practicing is really important, but think about what you're looking for. That'll help you to know what kind of camera and how to set it up. Um, and you have to anticipate like irrigation or other issues. Um, that oh, Time lapse, that's what makes it difficult because a lot of things can happen in a week or two versus 
I've had issues with things happening within three or four hours, you know, when I'm just doing right. a, a time lapse. Well, and if you're going to do something you need to insight at, even when I was in grad school, I had a student who set up a actually very nice Canon DSLR camera on a on a uh, time lapse project. If you're inside or in a greenhouse, you can set up a very nice camera and uh, have it run. The biggest thing you run into with those is battery power. Yeah. But you know, if you you know, the field cameras they're not super high quality. They're good enough to see what's going on, but it's not like a really nice digital picture. And it, like like Bruce says, it kind of depends on what you're doing and where you're trying to do it. There's a lot of options out there nowadays. Yeah, for example, when I do, um, when I use a GoPro and use still photos, they're very large pictures. But what's nice about it is when I'm done, I can make them into whatever speed I want movie and then bring them into an editing program and crop them because they're just, they're ginormous. So it's, it's awesome because I can move around within that whole picture for the video. But with this size, it'd be difficult. It would get very digital looking and break up. Yeah. Um, in fact, I could give you an example of, um, let me just end that. Thank you. Um, of what I've just done for my office. Should be right here. I have two. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I have to share this, though. Back this up. Lynette typed in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Is there a certain program you put them in to do the time lapse? There are Perfect. all kinds. Yeah, yeah. Bruce is going to talk all about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is there's so many. Um, so I, I, I wrote down a few that are free. Um, Panel lapse, it's called. Uh, there's Sky Studio Pro, LR time lapse. Some of those have restrictions, like the LR time lapse, you can only have 400 pictures. But um, a simple one, and the Lime Movie Maker, they quit supporting it, it's back. You can use Movie Maker to import those pictures, and, and then you can vary the speed and everything. So that's one of the easier ways to do it. Um, if you have a Mac, I, like you mentioned, iMovie, um, there's there's just a ton of ways to do it, and you just have to kind of play around and find out what works best for you. What I used to use is just a QuickTime 7. Um, I could import them all and just decide what frame rate I want, and it would output the movie, and I just it was really simple. Uh, it's not usually that simple. When you're working, if you're getting picky and you really want those quality pictures, then you have to go in and tweak those. Um, there's ways to do that as well. Just depends on well, how if I'm just doing something for fun, not really worried about quality and work, I would just set my camera on time lapse, and I could download it. And if I didn't want to, I wouldn't have to put it into any editing program, would I? Right. All right. If, if you have an iPad, for example, you can do time lapse with your iPad. Yeah, it'll do it for you. That's the beauty of like the phone or the iPad. You yes. just put it into that mode. Set it up on some. You want to set it up on some kind of tripod, though, or your picture is going to be really weird moving around. But if you can get down a very still spot, or you know, hold it in a, a still position, yeah, you just click the button, just let it go. Yep. And I, I have friends that do that more often than I do because I usually use different kinds of cameras. But again, a tripod or a way to hold it steady because it's going to be there a while, even if you're just doing it for an hour. Um, but you could be doing it for several hours, and one of the ways is accumulation of snow I mean, when the blizzard's coming but hopefully we won't be doing that for a while <laughs> if you look at your screen this is out my office window and i and i just stuck a gopro on a sticker and this was one winter and i didn't know i was going to get a sun dog at the same time but it just gives you an idea when you bring those together and it can look pretty smooth depending on the speed and the number of pictures you take per second or how many seconds you go this is a, a picture about every six seconds. But, you know, you get surprisingly th surprising things. See, I can't clean the window because it's the third floor, so <laughs> that doesn't work so good. Um, and let me see. I got one other. I got a couple, but I'll just show you one more. I want to see the desktop. How do I do that? There we go. And that would be the rain. Same deal, out my office window. Um, 
and you can see uh, a small rain. There's a little rainstorm going by. Um, it's really smooth, other than the trees shaking a little bit. But this was a, a lot. That's there's a pan or a zoom going on, and I'm doing that with software because of the you know it's so large. The resolution is so large. But I purposely make these really short unless I have a purpose for them in a video or whatever I'm doing. So. So, and I'm not going to show you that one. I probably people have seen it. There's another one um, where I I had a beard and I shaved it off and used time lapse and it's it's actually kind of funny. But that was just more for fun. And that. <laughs> but those two that I just showed you, the one was just with still pictures and one was actually with video. So you could tell that second one was a little smoother. I can't tell maybe with the quality here, but uh, it was a little smoother because it's just a video running it, and I could just speed it up and slow it down. But the other one was done with stills, but you get a lot more options too with stills. Other questions? I'm going to put some people on the spot. I'm just curious if any of you have thought about how you might use time lapse photography. Leslie and Brian, who are on, are crops people, so they may be thinking kind of like Andy. Lynette, you're mostly youth, aren't you? Have you thought about how you might want to use time lapse? We have a nice small group here. This idea for this topic came up from a county-based agent, so she'll want the recording. <laughs> I would use it similarly to Andy in, say, uh, plant identification and uh, herbicide injury uh, symptoms, et cetera. Uh-huh. For you, now. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, Lynette. I think kids would just have fun doing about anything with it, so. Yeah, that's what's great about youth. I mean, you could do something productive, but at the same time, they're going to be completely entertained and taken in with it. Right. Yeah, and, and like I said, for like the $50 camera, you probably set that up for $65, $70. It's fairly inexpensive. Yeah, that could be just an iPad thing. Or even an or iPad phone. or phone. That's yeah. true, yeah. Even just that, they all have them. That's true. And one thing uh, that's cool with kids is if you have a big project and you start it and you do your big project and you run that time lapse and people are whipping around fast, but you actually see things form. It's pretty cool. We we have family ones where we're building a snowman and that kind of thing. It's It's pretty fun. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to sign off. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Well, uh, if there aren't any more questions, we'll call her the end. But if you have more questions, this would be the time. Well, I'm going to sign off too then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in. And I know there's some people are going to watch the recording because they, they couldn't make this time. So. I hope that works out for him. Yeah, thank you. And I'll say if you watch the recording, feel free to give me a shout if you have any questions. Um, or me, yeah. Or Bruce, too. Yeah. You know, let us know if you need anything. Thanks, you guys. All right. Now I have to stop the recording.